This recording demonstrates the microgrid synchronization application developed in the Resilient Information Architecture platform for the smart grid. This is a collaborative project uh, between Vanderbilt University, NC State University, and Washington State University, funded by the Department of Energy under award number DEAR0000666. The smart grid depends on distributed intelligence realized through software applications that run on embedded computers attached to nodes of the power system. The REAP software platform provides the technological foundation for distributed and resilient applications for improved and effective energy management. The technology impact is the design and prototype implementation of an open source software platform that will be available to industry to build upon, enabling a software market and ecosystem where intelligent energy management systems can be implemented in a resilient and robust framework. The REAPS concept will be deployed on embedded computing nodes attached to various elements of the power system. Each node will have local sensing, actuation, computing, and communication capability. The diagram shown on the right hand side, each bus of a power system network has an associated REAPS node, uh, has a REAPS node associated with it. The REAPS platform provides the software layer that isolates the hardware details so that the software applications will be portable across multiple devices. The platform offers unique services for real-time data dissemination, fault tolerance, coordination across applications distributed over the network. The platform will be supported by a model-driven development tool suite to reduce uh, development costs. Microgrid Resynchronization Application The Microgrid Synchronization Application implements microgrid synchronization and reconnection to the grid using a distributed algorithm that runs on the REAPS platform. Demonstrates the initial capabilities of the REAPS platform services and it uses three REAPS nodes that are connected to a real-time simulator uh, which models the power grid. North Carolina University is developing applications supporting microgrid operation. These applications support islanded mode of operation, grid-connected mode of operation, and the transition between grid-connected and islanded modes. This particular demonstration focuses on the synchronization application that transitions the system from the islanded mode into the grid-connected mode. In, our, in implementing our applications, we're using a microgrid topology that represents a typical distribution feeder. The distribution feeder is separated into two microgrids, microgrid one and microgrid two. In microgrid one, all the distributed energy resources are interfaced to the grid using inverters. In this case, we have uh, three uh, battery energy storage systems and we have one concentrated PV farm. In microgrid two, there is a combination of in inverter interfaced DERs and synchronous machine interface DERs. Specifically, the two uh, combined heat and power units have a synchronous machine interface directly to the uh, grid. Each sensing and actuation component in a microgrid is associated with a REAPS node. We differentiate between three different types of REAPS nodes, protection, load, and DER nodes. Protection nodes, marked in red, are associated with protection devices, such as relays. The nodes, marked in green, are the load nodes. They're associated with asset switches and can be used, for example, for load shedding. Finally, the blue nodes are associated with distributed energy resources. The synchronization application will be implemented in microgrid 1 
of our test system. The synchronization application matches the voltage, amplitude, frequency, and phase on either side of the point of common coupling relay before the relay reclosing. In our particular implementation, a single DER is tasked with eliminating this voltage, amplitude, frequency, and phase difference. The actual implementation of the sync application, we will have two REAPS DER nodes fully implemented in hardware, and our application will select between one of the two nodes and demit the sync DER. The sync DER is selected based on a predefined priority list and the availability of the DER to perform the resync function. So for example, if this particular DER is first on the list and the DER, um, but the DER is not actually capable of supporting the voltage and the power requirements for the resync application, then um, the application will go to the next DER on the list and select it as the resync DER. Um, going further and further down the list until it finds a DER that is capable of performing this function. When the synchronization app is initiated, first the voltage and frequency restoration application that uh, ensures that the voltage and frequency in the microgrid is stable is stopped since it's no longer needed. The sync DER is selected based on the criteria described earlier. And uh, the um, protection uh, REAPS node sends the phaser measurements to the selected SYNC DER. The SYNC DER then enables first its voltage synchronization loop to eliminate the voltage error on either side of the point of common coupling, followed by the phase synchronization loop to eliminate the phase error on either side of the point of common coupling, at which point the relay automatically uh, recloses when the voltage, frequency, and phase uh, error is within a small margin. The voltage a synchronization loop eliminates the voltage error by essentially controlling the reactive power injection by the selected DER, while the phase error is eliminated based on the real power injection from the uh, resync DER. The, this plot shows the synchronization up results. After five seconds, the system is islanded, at which point the voltage and the frequency of the uh, microgrid deviate from that of the main grid. Um, after an additional three seconds, at eight seconds, the voltage and frequency restoration algorithm is started and after two seconds, the voltage is brought back to its nominal value. Following that, at uh, 12 seconds, the sync app is enabled, at which point the voltage is first brought to its, um, the voltage error is brought to zero. Since it was already zero, the uh, phase difference um, component of the algorithm is uh, enabled. Uh, and uh, you can see that the phase difference uh, goes towards zero as the voltage slowly deviates from the nominal uh, value due to the coupling between the two, uh, but then comes back to the nominal value uh, once the phase is close to uh, the phase difference is close to zero. Uh, when the voltage, frequency, and phase values are close, the error is close to zero between. Uh, on either side of the uh, relay, the relay automatically recloses at about 14.2 seconds. To summarize our demonstration, we are running a model of our microgrid in the Opal real-time simulator. The simulator, through its analog output ports, uh, sends the analog voltage uh, measurements on either side of the point of common coupling to a physical SEL751 relay. The relay then uh, sends this information into the REAPS platform using the C, uh, IEEE C37 protocol. Um, the selected 
uh, resync DER then uh, subscribes to the phaser measurements which are broadcast into the REAPS platform and based on that information uh, actuates the resync algorithm by eliminating first the voltage and then the phase error in the system. Simultaneously, another REAPS node is used to um, capture all of the broadcast information and output the information onto a data logging interface. The hardware demonstration of the system was shown at the RPAE annual summit and it, it consists of a um, set of BeagleBone black units that are interfaced with each other using a router and a network switch. Below that you can see our oscilloscope that uh, measures the voltages on either side of the point of common coupling of the microgrid. These measurements are extracted from the analog outputs of the Opal RT simulator. The same analog signals are also sent to the SEL relay. The SEL relay is networked through the uh, network switch with the uh, BeagleBone black units uh, where the REAPS platform is implemented. Two user interfaces are available. One is based on the Opal RT interface uh, that uh, gives access to all the simulated values within um, Opal RT uh, environment. Uh, and then also we have a data logging interface which uh, records the data that is being published onto the REAPS network. This is a demonstration on how resynchronization functionality is built uh, in REAPS platform. The testbed is fully built in Opal RT. Initially, the whole system is grid connected. The PCC measurement is done by a real SCL relay as part of the hardware in the loop in further simulation. We have three different kinds of loads modeled. We have some non-critical residential load. We have a large mer merchant load. And we have some variable residential load. We have three ESS modeled. Each of them have a, a controllable power output. And we also capture the SOC for each battery. The dynamic PV model is using a one second PV profile. Both grid side and microgrid side voltage phaser is measured by the SEL relay and sent back to OPPO. Here are the control panels for the system. As you can see, we can actively island the microgrid. We can also manually enable the system's secondary control and the resynchronization functionality. Right now, the system is grid connected. As you can see, the voltage and frequency are stable on both sides. Right now, when we switch into island mode, the system is islanded. The voltage and frequency will change to a new steady state point because of the droop control. Right now, we enable the secondary control. After we enable the secondary control, the voltage and frequency on the microgrid side will be regulated to its rated value. Next, we will show the process of how we select our resignation DG. There are currently two DGs that are available for resynchronization, and they are not selected. We first enable the first DG, DG1. As you can see from the logger, DG1 receives the enabled signal, and the status turned from 0 to 1. Next, we enable DG2. When both DGs are enabled, the logic will come out with the conclusion that only one will be enabled. And in this case, it is the DG2 that is enabled, and the DG1 will be disabled. Right now, as you can see from the logger, since we enable the secondary control, we have a constant angle difference because of the same frequency on both grid side and microgrid side. We also have a zero voltage difference 
But for the system to resync, we also want to eliminate the phase difference between microgrid and grid. Now the resynchronization command is issued. As we can see, the phase difference between the grid side and the microgrid side is decreasing because of the resynchronization control. When the phase difference falls in a certain range, the SEL relay will automatically reclose and the synchronization is successful.